Hey guys, so now we go to section 20, still on Article 3 of the Bill of Rights and our 1987 Constitution. So this is non-imprisonment for debt. So, um, ika nga, walang nakukulong sa hindi pagbayad ng utang. So section 20 provides that no person shall be imprisoned for debt or non-payment of a poll tax. So ano ba yung debt? It means any liability to pay money growing out of a contract expressed or implied for humanitarian reasons, an added guarantee of the liberty of persons against their incarceration for the enforcement of purely private debts because of their misfortune of being poor. So, yun nga, hindi parang, syempre, pag uh, hindi mo naman talaga kayang bayaran, for humanitarian reasons, hindi ka pwedeng ikulong. So debt is any civil obligation arising from a contract expressed or implied, we learned this in our oblicon, resulting in any liability to pay money. So, yun na nga, sabi dito, a fraudulent debt may result in the imprisonment of the debt if, uh, of the debtor if the fraudulent debt constitutes a crime such as estafa, um, Article 3.5 in the revised penal code, and the accused has been duly Convicted. So the scope of the guarantee against imprisonment for non-payment of debt is that if an accused fails to pay the fine imposed upon him, this may result in his subsidiary imprisonment because his liability is ex delicto and not ex contracto. So a fraudulent debt may result in the imprisonment of the debtor if nang asabi natin, may estafa siya or na convict na talaga siya. So next we go to poll tax. What is poll tax? The general rule sa poll tax is that uh, non-payment of taxes is punishable with imprisonment. So again, we go to what is poll tax. It's a specific sum levied upon every person belonging to a certain class without regard to his property or occupation. The exception dito is um, yung failure mo nga to pay the poll tax. A tax is not a debt since it is an obligation arising from law. Um, hence, it is, its non-payment may be validly punished with imprisonment. In the book of Bernas, it says that the cases touching on the subject reveal that the constitu constitutional prohibition stated in full means that no person may be imprisoned for debt in virtue of an order or in a, civ in a civil proceeding either as a substitute for satisfaction of a debt or as a means of compelling satisfaction. But the person may be imprisoned as a penalty for a crime arising from a contractual debt and imposed in a proper criminal proceeding. So... Uh, how about Batasan Pambansa Bill 22, the passing checks law? BP 22 is constitutional as it penalizes not the non-payment of contractual obligation, but the criminal act of issuing a bouncing check. Uh, we learned this in, in our crim class or in my crim. And actually, I made a video of this, yung Batasan Pambansa Bill 22. It's not what criminalizes the act is the issuing of a check that has no funds thereof. Like, it's a mala prohibitum crime. So the moment you issue the check and it, and um you know that you know for a fact that insufficient yung laman niya, you are already um you are already liable for BP twenty two. So um to to know the difference of BP twenty two from Mustafa as well, check out my other criminal law videos. So sa poll tax naman, it can be understood as the cedula tax or the residence tax. The constitution does not prohibit the cedula tax, but it prohibits imprisonment for non-payment of the cedula or resident residence tax. A poll tax may also be understood as a tax, the payment of which is made as a requirement for the exercise of the right for of suffrage. So being a citizen, you really have to pay your taxes. The imposition of a poll tax in this sense is prohibited by Article 5, Section 1, which disallows the literacy, property, or other substantive requirement for the exercise of suffrage. So this is a very short discussion. Actually, my professor also parang dinaanan lang din niya tong article na to. But um, we really have to know this as well. So thank you for listening and subscribe.